Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hey, everybody. It is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and today I'm here with Sharon Pfeiffer, and we are going to talk about Bakelite. So, hello, Sharon. Hello, Margaret. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I mean, I'm surrounded by Bakelite. How could anything be wrong? <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, so um, for those of you who don't know who Sharon is, I met her, was it last year? I think so. And with, this was when I was doing uh, Chatterbooks Book Club, and Sharon is an author, and we had her on. Was it was it Heather that I met you through? Uh, I, I, I don't remember. I think, didn't you contact me? I think you just contacted yes. me. I yes. think. Yes. And it's like, hey, we're doing, we're reading your book. <laughs> you want to come talk to us? And sure enough, you did. So tell us a little bit about yourself. In yeah. okay, um, well, I'm an author of the Jane Wheel Mysteries, and uh, I I have my books around here somewhere. I was going to show one. This is the first in the series, and it's called Killer Stuff. And you can see on the cover that it's got a lot of Bakelite jewelry on it. And um, my publisher, uh, Saint Martin's Minotaur. Uh, the the man who was in charge of doing the paperback had used his wife's Bakelite collection for the cover because in the hardcover book they used a sketch and a sketch doesn't do justice to Bakelite. Jane Wheel, my heroine, is a picker and a thrifter and a you know she and her problem is in the books she has a hard time getting rid of anything so she ends up with it surrounded by everything and Bakelite is her favorite. It's her favorite collectible, but she uh, can't always afford, you know, great bake lights. So she, well, she finds better things in the books than I usually find in real life. But she does buy a lot of bake light buttons and things that are, you know, not necessarily bake light jewelry. Yeah, absolutely. I, that was we read Lucky Stuff, and and that was one of the things yeah. I loved was just the description of her house before she left it. But just yeah. jars and buttons and things like that. So yeah. Well, if I if I had a better cam if I had a camera, I could probably show you some things that would and and with your you know with you and and your friends who are watching, I wouldn't seem quite as mentally ill as I might to some of my own friends who come in and say, "Where did you get all this stuff?" You know. And, no, we like, probably see it as, "Whoa, look at all this cool stuff." <laughs> yeah, that's that's my people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so. How did you get into collecting Bakelite? Well, I I think I, I you know, and I can't be positive, but I think I actually um, found a button tin at a rummage sale, and this was before everybody was buying buttons. I mean, really, now buttons are very popular collectible, um, mm -hmm. or at least people buy them for resale. Resale, um, and I saw a button tin, and I just thought some of them looked great, and it reminded me of my grandmother's button tin and I remembered playing with buttons. So I brought them home and I looked at some of the ones that I knew were vintage and older and I started reading about Bakelite and there was a certain kind of Bakelite button that I just loved and it's, I can show you, it's, yeah. called, a, it's called a Bakelite cookie and it's two pieces of, ba oh, up. <laughs> it's a Bakelite cookie and this happens to be a yin yang cookie and it's two colors of Bakelite that are laminated together. And in my first book, Killer Stuff, this becomes a big clue to solving the crime. So this is, a, this is my favorite first kind of Bakelite button. And after that, I realized, well, I want jewelry. I want Bakelite jewelry. And I like that, you know, it was, it was uh, in, Bakelite's a plastic, um, a phenol plastic that was invented uh, around the turn of the century, you know, in the early 20th century. And it was made for um, uh, like things like plugs and electric connectors because it, it, didn't, it didn't burn, you know, it didn't cause a fire. So um, that, that's what it was mainly used for. Then when they found out it could be carved and colored and it could be used for jewelry, and it was most popular during the 30s, and I love that era, and I love the vintage stuff from the 30s. So that's how I kind of fell into a lot of this fake life. Awesome. When, when you were talking about your buttons, I was reaching because I had some buttons over there I was trying to grab, but I couldn't reach them. So. <laughs> but I well, you see, I've got everything really close to me right here. I'm surrounded in my desk. I have, I'll show you. I actually even brought in from the kitchen these are, this is Bakelite handled flatware. 
So Bakelite was used for all kinds of um, uh, utilitarian, you know, it had such a utilitarian use. So Bakelite, you know, I'm sure you've seen Bakelite flatware. And if you find Bakelite flatware, um, you know, I, I know you're thrifters and resellers there. Um, Bakelite flatware is, uh, usually you can get, you know, anywhere from 3 to $5 a piece for a Bakelite set. So if you find place settings, and it, depending on what color they are and how, uh, how carved they are, because this is, you can see it's got kind of a carved edge. So they, you know, it becomes more valuable. So, you know, it's something to keep your eye out for. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great tip. But I wanted you to show the, the cookie one, the cookie button again, the back, yeah. because that's something that I had to learn. Hang on. Let me present you so everybody can see it. Okay. Okay. This is the back and this is the front. It's a sew through. It's a bake light cookie sew through button. And sew through just means exactly what it says. You sew through it. This is a bake light button that has a, a metal shank on the back. So, you know, you can tell that, I don't know if you, you know, it's a, you know, the thing that comes out of the back to sew it, to right. sew it on. So, um, I'm not, I'm not a button expert by any means. I'm not an expert on anything. So I want to make that clear that, um, I, I know I, I, I'm learn I've learned a lot and I'm learning a lot, but, um, I still buy things that look great to me and are vintage they're not always bake light you know sometimes i just like the look of it so i think that um you can't advertise anything as bake light that you that you don't test as bake light because collectors will be very meticulous about that mm -hmm. on the other hand there are many people who collect bake light and who love the look of bake light who will be very happy with any kind of phenol vintage plastic. And so that's that's what I think you, you know, you should familiarize yourself with. If you love Bakelite, read the books on Bakelite. Look to see what the jewelry really looks like, what colors are there. If something is pure white, it's not Bakelite, because Bakelite is from the 30s and it has a patina and it's darkened. Yeah. And we we were talking about this before we started about how I, I'm not a jewelry expert at all. I always say I'm a jewelry enthusiast. And then you were saying as well, like, you know a lot about it. But again, yeah. Right. And not then, an expert. <laughs> could you touch on, this is, I'm going off, I'm going off script. Um, well, it's okay. Could you touch on the whole calling something Bakelite and then we were talking about, well, some people might get upset because what if it's Catalan or, you know, right. that's all. Thing. As far as as far as I'm concerned, Catalan and Bakelite are are this. They're basically the same things. They're a vintage phenol plastic, um, and I think I described it before that uh, Catalan is a tissue and Bakelite is Kleenex. You know, Bakelite is simply a brand name for a phenol, a vintage phenol plastic. The reason they don't make these plastics anymore is because they were made with formaldehyde. They were terrible pollutants. That's why the smell test, which I think everybody's familiar with, the hot water test, um, you know, you dip, you dip something in hot water, you smell it, or some people can rub it. Some people can, you know, just rub it and get, generate some heat. You've, if you see people at a flea market and they're furiously doing this, they're faking because they can't smell it that way. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I've never been able to generate quite that much heat. But if you dip it in boiling water um, and you pull it out, it should smell sharp, like a sharp chemical smell. And it's basically the it's from formaldehyde. And so that's a that's a good it's a good way to tell um, if you're selling something as Bakelite, you're selling it for a lot of money as Bakelite because it's a beautiful carved piece of Bakelite, then you have to test, and you can test. I, I know, Margaret, you've done uh, demonstrations with Simichrome, and um, the, and I think people who collect Bakelite are probably familiar with that. They probably looked it up. And Simichrome is a thick, pinkish polish. And um, I was saying to Margaret earlier that I have found a new method that I much prefer. I use a 409 cleaner, and uh, it's the same kind of thing. You put a little 409, uh, and I'm, 
409 here this is it 409 it's it, you know you can buy it at the hardware store the grocery store it's an all-purpose cleaner and you put a little bit on the on whatever you're testing and then you'll get the same smear but when you the difference is 409 is a, a, a almost clear but kind of bluish liquid you can tell that yellow smear on the swab so much better than you can with the simichrome polish i think i can just see it more clearly I'm gonna have to get something to try because I, I was telling you before. I think I have 409 ca like glass cleaners. That's so probably not the same, but well, I, I didn't want to buy. I, I bought it. I bought the refill jug so I could pour it into a dish and dip in because I thought if I sprayed it on a cloth, I wouldn't know when it stopped, you know, working or being saturated enough. So this way, I think it's just a little easier to control. Yeah, I'll have to get some to to test out again what I've got. But I wanted to pull out my buttons because I found these at a garage, not a garage, so but a thrift store. Um, and at first I thought they might have been Bakelite, but then I realized no. Because <laughs> well, I remember. It, it, I can tell by the color. I can tell by the oh, color okay. that, they, that they're not. Yeah. So I, I remembered when we talked before and you had mentioned the cookie buttons. And then I flipped them over and then the color doesn't go through. Right. So I watched, there was a, um, Ameri had you watched American Pickers? <laughs> oh, well, yes, I, I have. I have watched it occasionally, yes. So there was one, and, and I, I linked it in my jewelry group, where they are, they ran into these people that have all of this Bakelite, but it's, some of it's uncut. So the, oh, it's like tubes of it, so it has to be right. sliced. And then carve, and so it's like, well, if the color is not going all the way through, I mean, would you say that that's true? Like, it would have to. It usually, like a Bakelite cookie. Now, here's another type of cookie, and it's really tiny, so I'm going to hold it up. Can you see it okay? Oh, it's, yes. it's like a little flower inside, and, and I'm going to turn it over. You can see it's on the other side as well. It's, it's, it is, it's like a meal fiore. If you've ever done made those beads, you know, where you – you wind it up or it's like they call them cookies because it's like cookie dough if you ro do a rolled cookie dough and that those are that's two different colors of bake light that they that they put together to make that button um the uncut i'm re excuse me for reaching here but this is a this is a bracelet that my daughter bought me at a at a flea market in new york and it it's it's not vintage bake light oh sorry it's not vintage <laughs> It's not vintage Bakelite. It's probably cut from a tube of something like Bakelite, and they were selling it as Bakelite. They were selling it as contemporary Bakelite. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and so these blanks are still around, and people do make, you know, they, they're making new Bakelite bracelets, but all, all, and, and a few, and pins and things like that. But most of those are, um, uh, uh, they're, they're, people get them and they carve them and then they sign them. And if they sign them, you know, you, they often date them so that people won't resell them as vintage Bakelite, which is, you know, fair. Yeah. Um, I, I have a pen. Mm, here it is. This is a pen that someone gave me as a gift and it was made from buttons or, or pieces. You know, somebody pieced out something and made it. And I'm not really a fan of things that are marriages like that. I just like the pure things. But, um, uh, but I thought this was very well done. And on the back, it's signed by the, by the maker. And so if you find things like that, I mean, they're, they're still, collect, you know, people still like them and they're, they're pretty, but it's not like this, which was made in the 30s. And this is an actual Bakelite pin that, you know, it's an initial pin that I think, now this may be legend, but I think that they made them like in the dime store. You'd go in and there'd be somebody there cutting them and you'd cut, you know, they'd cut your initials. And this belonged to my mother-in-law. That's why I know it's a really, you know, I know the date on this pin. But I want to show you the back because if you're interested in whether it's vintage or not, let me just, I, I want to give you the best view. Can you see that, that the, the, find, the, the, the clasp and the catch they're embedded in the plastic. You see what I mean? They're, they're embedded in the plastic. Vintage Bakelite pins will always be, they will be embedded in the plastic that way. They won't be glued on. 
So if you see something with a with a, a pin back that's glued on, and I, I'm sure there are exceptions to this. I mean, somebody could probably find one and say, no, this is real. But usually if it's glued on, that's because somebody's put together some pieces of Bakelite and made a pin. But a pin that was an original vintage piece of Bakelite would have a sunken uh, piece like that. And if you had a clasp, a Bakelite clasp on a necklace, it would be a a screw in bead. They would they would have drilled out the bead like that and screwed it in like that. That's how you know it's actually vintage. You know, I th I think that's how you know. <laughs> that's how I judge. Enthusiasts. <laughs> yes, enthusiasts. That's how this enthusiast judges. <laughs> yes. Uh, those are, I mean, yeah, again, great tips. Um, there was a question in the chat before I go back to ours, and it is from uh, Tina, latest grace. She says, what are the Bakelite colors? The Bakelite colors are, uh, they have different names to make it all the more confusing because some people, one person's butterscotch is, you know, this is, this is, would be a good example of butter. Actually, I'm looking in the, I'm looking in the picture and it looks paler than it does to me. It, this would be butterscotch. There's, you know, obviously red. This is a belt buckle that's got a little carving on it, um, which is nice. Um, there, uh, these are called, this is a belt buckle in two pieces. And so it, it goes like that. And um, this belt buckle has some butterscotch and it has green and red, which people call cherry or you know, apple. And these colors together, the butterscotch, the black, the green, and the red, are called the Philadelphia colors. And if you look up, I, I you know, I advise you to Google a lot of this stuff, you know, because you'll get pictures, you'll get images. But look up a Philadelphia Bakelite bracelet. First of all, it's beautiful. It's a laminate of those colors together. And it's if you ever find anything like that, it's quite valuable, um, harder and harder to find. But um, uh, it, those, those together are called the Philadelphia colors. Uh, this kind of green is sometimes, these are dress clips. I want to hold them so that, so it, it, the back is a clip like that. And these were on dresses in the 30s and 40s as embellishments. They usually came with the dress. And they almost always come, you might find a single, but they came in pairs. And this is one of my favorite favorite sets because it's so deco looking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but this would be called, some people would call it cream spinach. Some people would call it, you know, they, people have different names for it. But I, I stick with green, butterscotch, pale yellow. Th this is Bakelite, and this is a paler yellow. Um, uh, black, which didn't start out as black, it probably started out as green or dark blue, but it's turned black. Um, and uh, there's and there's a brown color. This is Bakelite, and I, I this is a ring that's carved, and it's just a plastic ring. And so you might see this. This would might be something you'd find in the toy section of a rummage sale. You know, you find it with junk jewelry, or you might find it. But if you test it and it tests Bakelite, well, you've you've upped your you know, I mean, it's not, it, it's not overly valuable, but it's more valuable than a plastic toy ring would be. Um, and this brown color is not as popular, but it is a, it is an authentic Bakelite color. Um, this is one of, this is a pair of bracelets that you see these scal it so the scalloped cut, that was a, that's a popular shape too. And you wear, you know, and everybody will tell you when you wear Bakelite bangles, you don't wear one. You wear many, at least two, because you want to you want to hear them. Of course, that sound drives me crazy. But you know, <laughs> but people who like Bakelite wear a lot of it. Sometimes this is another green color, and it's kind of I don't know whether you can tell in this, but it's almost transparent. Like if you held this up to the to the light, you could you could see through it. And that's another kind of green. Sometimes I think people call it. Um, they, not green jello, but something like that. You know, a lot of times they're food names because, as I always say, if it looks delicious, it might be Bakelite. It always looks like something you might be able to eat. And sometimes if there's embellishment, you know, metal embellishments on the on a Bakelite bracelet or necklace. Very cool. Now, I've seen some that were, like, swirled. So yes. This, I think, sometimes... 
Now, now th this has got a swirl to it. These, these two butterscotch, I, this is probably considered more apple juice. I don't know whether you can, I, it's, it's hard to really show the, with the light coming through, but this is swirled, it's kind of one color. It was probably, it was probably clear or, or white at one time, and it's become kind of an apple, that's another color, I forgot, apple juice, apple juice. is another color. Um, and there are also some swirled colors that have a lot of different colors in them, and those are considered end of day. Um, you know, when they just pour all of it into the vat and, you know, just like they have, there's some pottery that's considered end of day. And, and sometimes there's big light jewelry that's like that too. Yeah. So they would just swirl it up and say, okay, we don't want to waste it. Last bits. And I've heard, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but I've heard that some end of day, you should be a little suspicious of it because that's, you know, a lot of people who are trying to make new bake light stuff, they get that's what they do with the resin. They can't get the true colors, so they'll mix it and swirl it and say, oh, it's just, it's Bakelite, but it's end of day Bakelite. So that's something you want to be sure to test, you know, if, if you find something like that. Okay. Also, if it looks, if it's more, uh, it should kind of be more worn uh, on the inside, maybe darker mm -hmm. than, or, or, or else more worn on the outside, depending what it is or what kind of jewelry it is, because Bakelite, like if you have a necklace, now this necklace doesn't really have a front or back, so you can't tell, but if you had something that was worn against the body, things like, you know, perfume and oil would would change the, the color of Bakelite. So it, it won't always necessarily be uniform. So if you're looking for vintage Bakelite, you can look for something that's a little not uniform. Okay, cool. So I'm trying to think if I have a piece to show. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> for that example but um the crazy card in the chat was asking uh if bakelite beads are usually strung on nylon or wire or chain or is it just I, I don't i haven't seen i don't know about that i i think that there's a good chance that if you find bakelite beads you might find them restrung um did, did i already i already did i already show this I don't remember whether I showed this. No, I think I, you showed it. I showed it to you, but um, yeah. th this is a, a Bakelite necklace um, that I actually bought online because it, I think I bought it online. I don't think I found it in the wild. I, th I think I bought it um, because I, I, lo I love butterscotch and I, I like the, the look of it. Um, it's, it, is, it does have a broken, there's no hook on it. Um, so it, I, that has to be repaired. But, um, uh, it, this is strung on this is on string with spacer beads you know the crescents with spacer beads and spacer beads here you can tell by the style that it's vintage I mean this is not a necklace that would be made with that this kind of plastic today so you can tell it's vintage I just think it's very cool looking and most bake like beads like this or necklaces I think are strung on string um, now as I say that somebody's gonna say no, I have one that's on chain, and it could be. And also, you can often find bake like beads just as beads, and people would st might restring them. So, yeah, the one you've got on looks like it's the it's on a metal. It's yeah. it's it's got you know it's it's uh, uh, or something. You know, it's got hooks. You know, yeah, it's got loops. You know, in between. I was never sure. I found this at a sale somewhere and it was very inexpensive and I loved it because it looked like Bakelite but I was never quite sure. I've tested it because I was going to be coming on here to do this with you so I tested a bunch of things that I just liked and I had a feeling it was Bakelite and I'm proud to say I can actually say today for sure this is Bakelite okay. and, um, and it was I'm sure it was made as a necklace although you might find things like this out in the wild, which look very much like what's on my necklace, except they're thicker. And these are backgammon pieces. And um, I just, you know, I bought a backgammon set where the board was a mess. You know, it was all, it was just broken. But I looked inside and saw that it was filled with these, these are the backgammon pieces. And because I like Bakelite and I like the way it even looks in a jar as much as I like the way it looks on me. So these are these are Bakelite, and you can talk about the clunk sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
you can, I mean, you really can hear it with something that's thick and chunky like that. So. Right. You're right. When you're right, they're clanking together, it's like clank, 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 you know? Right. right. Now, these are also Bakelite game pieces, but they don't make quite as good a sound, but it's because of their thickness. And mm -hmm. so, but these are that butterscotch and cherry Bakelite pieces that are either, you can find, always, always check poker chips when you're at a rummage sale. If you see an old box that has poker chips or decks of cards, because poker chips used to be Bakelite. Now most of the old ones you find, I, that I find anyway are clay, but um, there are boxes of Bakelite. So since we're talking about that and you mentioned the ring and the toy section, maybe we could talk a little bit about other things other than jewelry and buttons that could be Bakelite and where you might find them in unexpected places. Well, I don't remember where I found these, but do you know what they are? Well, back in the day, I would have said they were roach clips, but I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, back in the day, you know, I lived it back in that day, too, and they would have been, I mean, were I to, I mean, my children are watching, were I to have tried something like that, yes, they That's could have been, but, in, but instead, back in the day, they are from back in the day, and back in the day, when you went to the dentist, he clipped a... a, a a, a towel on you, you know, you it, it, a, not a paper towel, but a, a cloth towel, and these are dental clips. You know, it held a, it held your, you know, bib on your your thing on. I would so, not. Um, and they have a little bit of bake light on them, so it was worth it to me. Now I think that probably a real jewelry collector would take this apart and use these as you know use these to restring make earrings or something like that but you know I, I buy these things i have a i have probably a thousand projects that i can actually just see looking around my office but those will probably stay as dental clips um also there are all kinds of utilitarian uses for bake light now this is a little um can you know a cocktail spreader knife but it's got a great little deco handle on it and, and it's, it looks, you know, I can tell that the colors are not going to be quite accurate. This is a beautiful um, kind of an olive green, which is a color I really like in Bakelite. Um, let's see, what else um, as far as utilitarian? Oh, uh, well, I'm a knitter, so I always look for um, knitting needles. And these happen to be, um, these are not, these all don't test as Bakelite. Um, some do, and I can't remember now which ones do and which ones don't, but these are, um, this is a crochet hook, but these are vintage, you know, I always collect vintage sewing stuff and knitting stuff, and these are, um, which is, you know, that's a really popular collecting, and if you're looking for, you know, if you have mostly, you know, in your group, you have mostly jewelry people, but boy, look in those sewing boxes because you find great things in sewing boxes. And um, so this is, you know, this is either Bakelite, Catalan, or some kind of vintage plastic. So these are awfully fun uh, to have, I think. And uh, as I said, there's lots of buttons, of course. And then I'm going to show you something else. Um, oh, and I don't think, I, I don't know whether I showed any earrings. I'm wearing a pair of earrings, which is not a, it's not a pair I normally wear, but I, I've always liked these because I think they're Bakelite. I've never tested them, but they're a nice, butter, rich butterscotch. But they are for pierced ears, which makes me not as sure about them. These, however, I know are Bakelite. And they're clip, <laughs> they're clip earrings, you know, so that's a good tip off if they're clip. Um, and they're screwed in. I, it's really hard to show, but it the they're oh, not. It's not glued on. It's screwed in. And so that's another way of telling that they're vintage bakelite earrings. And look at that nice, thick, juicy, chunky piece of bakelite on them. You know. So that's so they're they're a really. It's a good pair. Um, so there's there, there are those. Um, that some of these, I was going to get rid of a bunch of these things. I had a big box of Bakelite. I thought, you know, my kids don't really, uh, my girls don't want that. Maybe I'll just sell part of it. So if you see anything you like, you know, <laughs> yeah, let, let me know. Um, uh, let's see. Here's some more. Here is another kind of a button. Uh, uh, it's a another um, 
laminate button. I really like the two-tone. There are a lot of beautiful card buttons, but I like these. This is a, a, a lot of big old vintage coats have these big carved thick buttons. And this is, one of the questions, I'm sorry, I took it away. Uh, one of the questions you would ask me is, does black test with Simichrome? Or it does, th this button tests positive. Now, I don't know if all black does, because I think, um, first of all, I don't know whether it starts out black or the patina. I think sometimes Bakelite just gets dirty. It gets, it gets, you know, it, it sort of changes color, and I'm not sure after it changes color if it's going to test the same way. But this does test, and it's black, at least now. And um, that's another thing. When you're looking at vintage clothes mm -hmm. at a rummage sale or at a thrift store, look at the buttons. Because the, you might be able to get a blouse for a dollar because it's a crummy old blouse, but the buttons might be great Bakelite buttons, so, and which are valuable. Absolutely. And you were saying earlier as well, the Bakelite toys were something to look for. Right. Bakelite crib toys. Um, first of all, if you see, if you have children or grandchildren who are playing with a Bakelite crib toy, take it away because it has formaldehyde in it. So it's, that's not a good thing to, for them to play with. And instead, you can say that you will take it and take good care of it, which means you will sell it for a lot of money because crib toys um, they're really cute. They're carved. They're oddly shaped beads. They're little men with jiggly arms, or they have, you know, and, and they're multicolored. If you look up bake like crib toys, if you Google image images for that, you'll see what I'm talking about. Sometimes they're little jaunty sailors, you know, and little dancers, and they're really charming. And people repurpose them as pins. Or, and, they, and bake light collectors really like something like that because they know it's authentic and it's vintage because they don't make them anymore. I, oh. I'm sorry, go on. oh, I was just going to say, you can also find sometimes some, some combo pieces. This is, this is a pin that I'm really fond of. And I found this for not much money. And I think, I, I think it was like a couple dollars a long time ago. And I think people might not have thought of it as a bake like pin because it's mostly metal. That is not sterling. I would like to think it is, but it's not. And it needs some polishing, I can see. But the, the, and the little red part of the, of the thistle or the flower, it's probably, I think it's probably Scottish. It looks like a thistle to me. But um, the, the solid red part, did not test as bakelite. The apple juice part did. So oh. there's, there's sometimes, you know, I mean, I, now I think that red piece, I, I think it is bakelite. I think it's just not testing, but it, but it might not be. But it could, this would still be considered, to me, I would consider it an honest thing to say it's a bakelite pen, this apple juice bakelite here. Um, but it's, I think sometimes y you, you should, Test all parts because um, sometimes buttons are, are like that too. Um, this is a some this is a button that's um, uh, I I'm not positive, but I think the black I haven't tested this, but I've got a I, I found a set of these which I just love, and I think the black part tests as bakelite will test as bakelite, and I'm not sure about the butterscotch. It might. Or it might be vice versa, but you got to test all parts because they, they test differently. And let's That's an see. Awesome button, though. Huh? What? That's an awesome button, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 here's, and sometimes you'll find at a sale, somebody put these on a card and wrote Bakelite on them. So I, I, I'm considering them, okay. I know they're Bakelite because they look like Bakelite, but don't trust it if somebody else writes it. Test it yourself. I, I'm sure they are Bakelite, but um, uh, you know that don't don't you know if you're not real familiar with it. You know if you're not if you haven't really you know you know are, you're not well versed in it. Another thing, just go to an antique store or an antique mall, and somebody there's always somebody in the antique mall that we all envy that has like you know a hundred bake like bracelets, you know, on a paper towel rack or something. And they're all, they're just out there making you hungry and for them, you know, um, 
and look at them, feel them, touch them, feel the, feel the carving. If the carving is really sharp, it might not be as old as carving that has been worn down a little bit. You know, it might be a new blank that was carved, but you'll get to know the, the look of them. I know, I know exactly. I wish I had grabbed that picture off when I was sharing that. I can't remember if it was for this video or another one I did about Bakelite. I was like, okay, I want to see all your Bakelite people, you know, send, you know, put the, put your images in. And somebody just had this long bar <laughs> full of bracelets. I was like, that is amazing. So, I know. And, and they're so beautiful. I, I've never understood. In fact, you know, sometimes I think the way things are priced, I think they're priced in direct. I mean, I know that some things like gold and silver and gemstones have real value. However, I think that the value in something like Bakelite, which is was sold at the dime store, it was dime store jewelry, I think the value is directly correlates to how much someone loves it. Because, um, you know, you see these bracelets and they're very expensive, these card bracelets. Well, they're not an inherently, you know, valuable material, but they're gorgeous to the people who, you know, love them and like the work that went into them and the history behind them. Absolutely. And this is also to say, like these buttons, while they while they may not be Bakelite, yes, I'm going to sell them. Somebody will still probably buy them for, you know what I mean? They're still. Oh, I see. I would have bought those buttons. I now I, I would have bought the if I'd been in a sale and I saw those buttons, I would have bought them probably. Yeah. Um, I'm a knitter. I always think I'm going to use them. I don't. I just have jars of buttons. But um, uh, but. Just because they're not Bakelite doesn't mean, I mean, vintage plastic is, once you love Bakelite, you, you love Bakelite. Um, I wanted to show you one thing that I think might have some, I don't want to go on too long. I don't know how long you want me to go on, but this might have some value to your, to your people. These are two very similar items. One is called iCubes. It's in a little leather case. And this is called crossword dice, okay? Okay. Now, um, this is, you know, from a toy. I, I, I picked these both up in, a, in the toy section, and they were both like 50 cents or under at a rummage sale. This case opens to see the cubes inside, and they're kind of letter dice, and it's, an, it's a vintage, it's an old game, like poker dice. You know, you might be familiar with poker dice. These are Bakelite. Okay, these all test as Bakelite. This, the crossword cubes, if you look at them, they look like Bakelite. Oh, they you know, they've got that kind of patina and stuff. Well, they're not Bakelite. In fact, you know, you know if you are familiar with Levenger, you know, uh, the, the office, you know, the cool office supply paper, fountain pen places that, mm -hmm. you know, these, these are in a Levenger case. And so they're very classy. They're in a real leather case, but they're new. You know, they're 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 new. But when you see dice like that or game pieces, they look old. You know, but they're but they're not. So these have to be tested before you would sell anything like that, because I think there are a lot of new things. I have a jar of dice here. <laughs> I have a jar of dice because everybody does, right? Um, and I I have not tested this entire jar. But the, but the ones that are clearer, you know, the older ones, those are probably Bakelite. Um, some of the, the yellowish ones, the solid ones, they may or may not be. They may be like those Levenger letter cubes. They look great all together, I think, you know, but, um, and I love them all the same, you know, just like my children, but, um, but some are Bakelite, some are not. And there, it's probably not a good idea to store plastic like that. I should also mention that. They should probably be stored separately on felt, not in, pl not in plastic. But um, so that's, and you know, here also, is a jar of, you know, because everybody keeps jars of game tokens around just in case. <laughs> just in so. case, right? Well, I did. Yeah. I bought, well, I have you presenting, hang on. Because I, I bought some buttons, like, at a garage sale. It was in this tub, you know, and, but when you open them up and then, like, I got these, it was in this. But oh. when you open it up, you could smell that. I think they yeah. were celluloid. I don't know if they were celluloid, but that being contained like that, all closed up. Yes, yes. It started getting sick from what I read there's like they can get sick yes however you at least you know in fact you know I should have kept some I once a Bakelite 
once it starts to break down, I get rid of it because I've been told it's contagious. You know, if you keep, but if you buy a button tin, you know, or a button box of some kind and you open it up and you get that smell, the first thing you feel is, you know, euphoria because of the, <laughs> no, but you feel euphoria because you think, oh, there's Bakelite in here. I can smell it. There must be Bakelite in here. That after that, you realize that um, if there's Bakelite in there, there's a good chance that it's starting to break down. So you have to, you should really go through that, you know, not keep that on a shelf, go through it, because there's probably a lot of things that can be saved, but once they start to crumble, then get rid of them, because that, that's really, that's not a good thing to have around. That dust is not good, and especially if you have small children around, it's like lead paint or something. You don't want that around. Yeah, absolutely. I When I opened one, it it smelled almost immediately like my great grandmother's sewing cabinet, you know, her big sewing. Yeah, cabinet. yeah, yeah. It well, like that's that's bakelite. Yeah, and <laughs> thimbles. You know, thimbles were made of bakelite too. You know that. You know, all kinds of little sewing doodads were made of bakelite. Yeah, so it's. I mean, it's it's a good place to check when you are going to say an estate sale or something. Check all this, this and stuff and all that. Um, I thought there was a question in the chat. Um, let's see, Judith was asking about the 409. Okay, yeah, you already talked about that. Okay, so I, I wanted to catch them before I went back to our, li our list. Um, <laughs> so you shared some of your pieces. Okay, okay, so. There's how, more. How can you tell if something is Bakelite when you're out in the wild? Like, I, the color? Well, nobody's going to want you to pop out a tube of Simichrome or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, it's homework. I, I mean, my feeling is ho it's homework. It's getting the feel of it, uh, knowing what it feels like, knowing what it looks like, uh, and knowing styles. Um, I'm gonna now this. Um, I'm gonna show you a necklace. This is a, a necklace that's a choker. Let's see if I can. That's so cool. Yeah. So um, it's a choker. I'll take the other one off. Don't want to clash. Um, so it, it, it's kind of a cool choker. It's probably from the, I don't know, the 70s maybe, um, maybe the 80s, but oh God. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a little tricky to put on and off. This part is definitely not baked like. This is definitely lucite. You know, it's a just clear plastic. I tested the rings. I thought they were baked light, and they are. Um, but I don't know whether they're I, you know, I don't know whether someone made it in the 70s from old stock. I don't know whether they were cut from another piece. I have no idea how it was made um, or when it was made. But it's, um, now I'm trying to think why I wanted to show you this. Oh, because um, if I was out in the wild, I would know from looking, I would guess from looking that these rings were baked light. But what would make me buy it is not whether or not they're Bakelite or not. It's that it's a really cool necklace. It's a really cool vintage necklace. It looks iconic. It looks like it's from the 70s. And that's what would, it, the same way this one, you know, that's, that's, that has the broken clasp, looks like it's from the 40s, you know. It, it, because once, when they have that look, then they're worth bringing home and testing. If you if you think it just looks like plastic, you're not sure if it seems thin, if it if it if it if you can see mold marks on it anywhere, then it's definitely not bakelite. But if it's a style, it, you know, get used to the style, get used to how things look, and get a book. You know, at the library has, I'm sure, because you're all thrifters and resellers and collectors, you have a lot of books. I really recommend. This is a book called. Uh, the Bakelite Jewelry Book. I, I'm a writer, but I have nothing to do with any collectible books. I just look for them at sales. You know, I never pass up a book that is a research book. Right. And I think I got this at a sale. And, um, uh, you know, so sometimes if there's no Bakelite, you still can find something about Bakelite at a sale. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm going to hold this close. This is a picture of a Philadelphia bracelet, which I talked about, you know, that kind of with the different colors. Oh, yeah. And on the back are these bracelets that have the laminated dots that, that and they they have a name I can't remember the name but um, they're infused you know they were inject injected dots so you see them all the way through you know you see the color all the way through and a a book like this I I, I already mentioned this to Margaret but 
I, I marked almost every page last night. I was looking through it and I thought, oh, I, I'd like to show that or I'd like to show that. Now, see those glove pins or those hand pins? Those aren't going to... Okay. Uh, those aren't going to those aren't going to be modern. Those are going to be vintage because the style you're going to know that those are probably bake like. So you know, there's certain kind of shapes and stuff. Look, study these books, you know, and and just um, and and also a lot of plastic jewelry is really cheap. If it's chunky, if it's carved, if it's a great color that you respond to, then it's worth taking a chance on. Um, or I suppose you could put a rag soaked with 409 in your pocket, but I'm not <laughs> sure I would recommend that. But <laughs> well, okay. So you had a couple other books, and I'm gonna I'll link the books later after the show. Sure. Sure. This is this one is called Plastic Jewelry, and it has a lot of bake light, and it also has um, other kinds. It has you know it'll talk about catalin and lucite and and. Uh, 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 what was the other thing? Uh, uh, not lucid. Celluloid. Yeah. Celluloid. Um, and so and you'll get familiar with what that looks like, too. And then here's another one. You know, and, and they all have great pictures. I mean, they're just wish books. You know, they're like the old Sears catalog. They're just, you just, it's something new to covet. Um, yeah. I was showing you the one. Rosa, who's a friend of the, of the channel, sent me this book, Collecting Art Plastic Jewelry. Oh, and it's beautiful. like... A drool worthy book, just the picture. Yeah, I know. It's gorgeous. Just flipping through it. I, I sat at the kitchen table when I got it and just devoured this book. So, yeah, and, and, and that's that's really, that's to me, that's the way you really know. Um, you start knowing and, and sensing when something is, is, is really big light. And you know, I bought um, this is a necklace that I bought because I thought it was kind of cool. And um, I don't know whether you can see the whole thing, but it's kind of, you know, it's these are regular sh shaped beads, and then and it has that kind of clasp that I like, you know, oh, the the screw, the the drilled into the bead clasp. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was bakelite because I thought it was just a little too Kelly Green, you know. I had a feeling it wasn't bakelite, but I knew it was vintage plastic, and I knew it was kind of a cool looking necklace so I, it didn't matter to me I mean this is actually one that I sometimes I buy them and I love them and I love them on my shelf or on a hook to hang and look at but I don't wear them but this one I've actually worn because I really like it um, but it doesn't test his bake life you know I, I think it's just I think it's lucite um, with buttons and I don't know whether I can quickly find an example but if you're not sure if something is uh, what kind of plastic it is there's a kind of a button that's called a tight top and uh for button collectors out there they'll know what i'm talking about and i only know because i i'm I, you know i'm not a great button collector but i you know i don't have one right here but it's um it's usually got a metal back but it's it looks like it's got plastic almost stretched over the top um oh you know this is a tight top um, but it might be kind of hard to see, but that kind of looks like a Bakelite button. It's carved, it, it has some, but if you look at the back, it's got a metal back, and the top, the, you can tell the plastic is kind of applied over a metal right. form. That's called a tight top, and that's almost always celluloid, you know, because it's th very thin, it's almost like a thin slice, it's put over it and then carved, or carved and then put over it, and um, that's something you don't, if you think it's a tight top or if you think it might be celluloid, you want to be careful about testing it because I'm not so sure these caustic things are so good for celluloid and certainly you don't want to get it around heat. And if you're, if it's a, if you have, buy a vintage blouse or a vintage sweater and you want to wash it before you put it up for sale or before you wear it, take the buttons off, wash it sew the buttons back on it's a lot of work but you will save yourself some heartache because the celluloid button could easily melt in our current washers and dryers oh yeah so flammable and then yeah. they smell like like what like mothballs or 
I, I do think they have some kind of a smell, but I'm not so great at those. I mean, yeah. I can tell a Bakelite smell. Sometimes I, I've described, somebody said, what, is, what does other stuff smell like? If Bakelite smells like formaldehyde, what does other stuff smell like? And I would say, like hot plastic. You know, because, you know, sometimes, I mean, I don't know how else to say, but it, it does kind of have a smell. But once, get something you know is Bakelite. You know, get something that belonged to your grandmother or your mother uh, that you know is Bakelite. And 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 dip it in hot water and get used to the smell. Um, I, I think I was saying to Margaret before we started. I hope I'm not repeating myself, but this is a piece of bakelite that um, came off of something else, and somebody gave it to me because people give me broken things like this all the time. They're sure that I'll find a place for them, and I always keep them. So I guess I do. Uh, but this is a piece of carved Bakelite. Well, it's not going to be used for anything. I'm not going to use it for anything, but it's a good tester against, you know. Um, if, if you don't know what it should smell like, find something you know is Bakelite, dip it and smell it and get used to that smell. You know, feel it, clunk it, you know. Yeah. Gina in the chat is saying, you're driving her dog nuts because her dog's name is Butterscotch and you keep saying Butterscotch. <laughs> I'm sorry, BS. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the crazy car was asking, how about the sound? Is the sound difference between Bakelite and plastic? I have some plastic here handy if you need. Uh, here's some plastic. Right. Click your plastic. All right. I'm not sure you can tell. I it, to me it sounds a little heavier, a little clunkier. Right. You know, I I don't know. I I actually think even though people say that's a way to test, I have a feeling it has more to do with the thickness of the bracelet than it does whether it's bakelite or not. Bakelite bracelets are usually a little more dense. They're usually thicker. They're chunkier is the word. I hope nobody has a dog named Chunky because I've been saying that a lot. But Chunky is a good test for Bakelite. If it's, and that doesn't mean there aren't thin slices of Bakelite. There are. But um, a Chunky piece is more likely to be Bakelite than to be celluloid or Lucite. Yeah, I wondered that too because if they're thin pieces, they won't have that same weight and mass. Right, right. I mean, you know, here are these two game pieces. Now, I don't know, that has kind of a hard, hard sound. Here's two game pieces. See, it's all Bakelite, but, you know, it's thickness. You know, it's so, I, it's very, it's it's really hard to, to say with that. You know? Yeah, OMFG says, I can definitely tell by the scent. Like, some people have, some people know the scent, like, the scent's hard for me. Yeah. Some people can yeah. tell the scent like that, some people can tell the sound, so I think it's just personal... I was going to sell these earrings, but I decided that I like it. I, I was thinking these were in my sell pile, you know, that, yeah, and by the way, I don't sell online, but I do have a sell pile because I always think that someday I'm going to sell online, but my sell pile is just another jewelry box. But now that I'm looking at them, I'm kind of liking them. So, you know, I think I, I might keep, I might keep these. They look you know, good. They look thank good. You. Thank you. He says he's been, he's been buying and selling Bakelite for over 30 years, so. That. That's somebody who knows, yeah. yeah. And then, oh, oh gosh, where did it go? Crazy Card said got some dominoes that were Bakelite um, and sold them for 75 bucks. So that was... Right. Yeah. yeah. Another another game, Mahjong sets, but people have pretty much caught on to that, that if yeah. you see a Mahjong set, um, not only are the Mahjong tiles Bakelite, but sometimes you get the, the trays that they come in are also Bakelite. But yes, dominoes, that's a, that's a really good... That's a really good thing to look for. So what if, like with the, the polka dot bracelets, they're, it's lacquered or glazed, and that simichrome test, would that work? How would you tell? Well, I, I, I don't know. And I wish I, had a, I wish I had one of those infused dot bracelets to be able to tell. Um, I think on the inside of it, which is where I'd test it, because if it's, if it's lacquered, you don't want to risk taking off a part of the lacquer if that's you know you don't want to you don't want to wreck the look of it. But on the inside, I would test it, and you know if it doesn't test as bakelite, I, I I don't think you know you probably can't sell it as bakelite. But believe me, if it's the right color and look and it's an infused dot, you know I I think 
you can probably tell. And you know, you could, and you know, I, I think that people who like Bakelite, just like people who like anything, you know, if they like art pottery or ephemera or whatever it is they like, if you went into an antique store and found a Bakelite dealer and said, what do you think about this? Now, if it's somebody you trust, they're going to tell you the truth. I mean, somebody could say, oh, that's not Bakelite, but I'll take it off your hands for 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. You know, well, then, then you know it's Bakelite, you know, because <laughs> um, uh, it's always my motto. If somebody offers to buy something from me because they just, they feel sorry for me, then I know I have something valuable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, but I, I think with, with Bakelite, you just you would know on one of those polka dot bracelets. I, I think you would know, and and but I don't know the answer to the lacquered question. But I would be careful with it. Yeah, and I I know we we are running out of time, and I have other questions. But I wanted to let everybody know that I have another friend coming that collects bakelite too. So I'm going to have another person coming on Wait. to the show and tell to share. Let me know. Let let me know too. Let me know so I can learn something. Do you have anything else you want to share or um, show or tell or anything before we start saying goodbye? I can't believe it's been an hour, first of all. No, it hasn't been an hour. <laughs> it's but it's, you know, don't, don't get me started. That's terrible. <laughs> I, um, I will say, I'll say one thing. When you see beads like this, and these are, um, uh, they're black beads. Sometimes people think of them as mourning jewelry. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm not showing them very well because I, I can't find the end of them. Here, here's another pair. Um, I bought all these at the same place. Okay. Because they're black and because I've said, I haven't mentioned black as a color and because they're kind of cut in this crystally way, you know, like in this kind of, uh, faceted way, uh, you might think, well, they're probably not bake light. But if you see this little tag right there, at the clasp, it says made in Germany. And a lot of Bakelite was made in Germany. And these are Bakelite beads. They don't necessarily look like it. They're not the most desirable. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I think, you know, people would buy them, you know, they're, you know, they're still nice beads and they're, they're Bakelite. But um, don't, don't, if you, something doesn't feel like when you feel your bead, you know, if you're looking for a stone and you know, to find, oops, sorry, getting something on my on my screen here. Um, uh, if you're getting, you know, if you're looking uh, for stones and you feel it, you you look to see if it feels cold, right? Yes. It's like you, you know, and if it doesn't feel cold, it might be uh, it might be plastic. If it feels cold just for a second, it might be glass. Well, don't. It, don't just because this feels kind of like plastic and you think well it's probably not anything if it says made in germany if it's made in europe it, there's a really good chance it might be bakelite so uh i think that's probably my last tip i'll think of things later but um well you know. if you have anything else let me know because i'll probably <laughs> um a write-up on my website you know just with the kind of things that we talked about and, and all that okay so, um all and right. well no, thank you so much for coming. And I linked down below your website and a couple of your books. So if anyone's interested, I really enjoyed Lucky Stuff. So. Well, thank you. Well, Killer Stuff is the first one in the series, and there are eight of them. So, um, but let, can I say my website? I've hardly ever updated there. So I would I would love for you. My character's name is Jane Wheel. And Jane Wheel has her own Facebook page, and that's where every week I post things that I find, and that's where I put articles about collectibles or write little pieces. So, um, if you like Jane Wheel on Facebook, look for Jane Wheel. It'll say she's a fictional character, but it's it's me. Um, and or or you can friend me on Facebook as well, and I I, I accept. As long as you're a friend of Margaret's already, I'll accept you uh, as a friend of mine. But um, uh, so if you like the Jane Wheel Facebook page, not a post, but actually like the Jane Wheel page, you'll see lots of pictures of collectibles and bake like and things like that. Oh, wonderful. I'll make sure to link that down below. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be yeah. great. Thank you. And thanks again. And um, thanks, everybody, for coming. We had 45 viewers live. Everyone mm -hmm. saying how wonderful yeah. it was in the chat. And, yeah, again, I, I will have another friend on talking Bakelite and sharing her collection. 
So I will keep you posted for when that is coming. Okay. Thank so, you, Margaret. Thanks so much, Thank and you. thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.